Hey, let me tell you one big secret of how you can teach yourself new openings or the easiest way to learn new openings. Well, just my opinion, but try to begin by studying some of the interesting traps and tricks that are found in that particular opening. E.g., let me show you how I taught myself how to play the Rui Lopez, which many find to be boring because of its non-comedial nature. By the way, e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, and bishop b5. The Rui Lopez is by far the top opening choice for champions and super grandmasters. This won't be boring, I promise. I'm only going to cover some interesting lines that will inspire you to start playing the Rui Lopez, especially during tournaments. The whole idea here is just to get rid of the Queen's Knight and chew the e5 pawn. That's all. But we can't easily do that because black is not playing blindfold chess. They are going to be doing something as well. Well, they have eyes they can see and play knight to f6. This is called the Berlin defense, the second most common defense against the Rui Lopez. So knight to f6 attacks our pawn on e4 and here the main line is to castle short. Before this video, I never understood why white has to gambit a pawn on e4. It just didn't make sense to me. But let me show you the whole hidden idea that grandmasters do not tell you. They want you to take this free pawn first and you may think that the idea is to take the defender of this pawn on e5 but no, because taking on c6 would just help black to open up many lines for his two bishops, okay? And according to Stockfish, that only favors black. So the main move here is pawn to d4 right away. So what white is saying here is that instead of me helping my opponent to open up his lines, I'm going to do it on my terms. Let black take me so that I can bring my king's rook into the game which is doing nothing on f1 by putting it on e1, developing a piece with tempo. And this is when you're going to see black playing pawn to d5, which leaves the queen's knight in a pin situation. And this is when we can now take on d4. Keep in mind that we are still down a pawn, but at the cost of rapid development. So right here, you will see your opponent playing pawn to a6, since they are not happy to see your pieces dancing in their territory. And what do you do here? You get rid of this knight, and after they take back with their pawn, now that's when you play knight g5. Black's knight cannot take our knight because it is pinned to the king by our rook on e1. The other idea of knight g5 is to pave way for our f pawn, would like it to sit on f3 and harass this knight right here. By the way, if h6, we'll be more than happy to trade our knights and take back on e4 with our queen, that'll be check. But if queen f6 intending to exchange queens, well, we have this move, knight takes e4, attacking the queen on f6. If they take our queen on d4, well, that'll be very sad because Knight f6 check is a killer move which ends the game on the spot. Now this is one trap that inspires most strong players to gambit their pawn on e4 on move number 4. Remember that they castle shot instead of holding on to their e4 pawn. Let me show you another trap that may inspire you to start playing the Roy Lopez. So you go pawn to e4 and they play e5. Well, go knight f3, knight c6, Bishop b5. Well, again, knight to f6 is the second top played move in the master's database. Well, I said just castle short. Now, this time, they may play pawn to d6, paving way for their light squared bishop. We saw in the previous line that black took on e4, which is still playable but very dangerous for black, especially if black doesn't know what he is doing. So, pawn to d6 is another way they can answer back to your Rui Lopez main line. Well, here I just recommend you go rook e1, now defending your pawn, and here they are going to play bishop g4. Ooh, I mean, intermediate level players like making use of their pins whenever they have a chance. But here, just go pawn to d4 once again. Ha, they are going to be happy to take your d4 pawn, which is a blunder, by the way, because now you have all the time in this world to shake their eyeballs by playing pawn to e5. Excuse me, pawn to d4 on this move is called a clearance sacrifice, okay? We are sacrificing this pawn in order for us to put our e pawn on e5. That's called a clearance sacrifice. Now we are attacking the knight 
or threatening to take the pawn on d6 and that would be open check okay so if they take back well now that's when we take back with our knight not our rook this is called the improved stainitz defense still the berlin defense anyways bishop takes d1 is what they play now watch first of all you go knight takes c6 check and at the same time threatening to win the queen on d8 the only sensible move appears to be king d7 after which you go knight takes d8 you take that queen and after they play king takes d8 you now go rook takes d1 threatening to take the d4 pawn next you will develop your dark squared bishop and your queen's knight on d2 and start playing chess from here not to mention that your light squared bishop is well developed and your king is very much safe as compared to your opponent's king oh let's go back a little bit all right so back to this position well again you go pawn to d4 now this time instead of taking if they play bishop e7 well you just take on e5 yourself so after d takes e5 i recommend you just take on c6 and let's check they have to take back after which you just simplify the game queen takes d8 rook takes d8 knight takes e5 threatening to capture the light squared bishop or the pawn on c6 and trust me in this position white has a plus four advantage not to mention the damaged pawn structure on the queen side so these are just some technicalities to look at when you're playing the ruler pays another trap that you can look out for in the berlin defense is where you start with e4 e5 knight e3 knight c6 bishop b5 a6 bishop a4 knight f6 what do you do again you just simply cast a short remember now wait a second instead of knight takes e4 or pawn to d6 you may see black playing bishop e7 right away well this is simply the closed Ruy Lopez they don't want to open any lines here well just go queen e2 well after this many of your opponents are going to cast a short which is a positional mistake by the way because now you can safely take the knight on c6 and after they take the pawn on e5 becomes a free pawn oh wow black thinks he can win the pawn back by queen d4 a typical move in the ruler pays well you just play knight f3 because if they take now that becomes a second blunder because of queen takes e4 and after knight takes e4 you go rook e1 laser beaming the dark squad bishop on e7 they can try to play bishop a5 holding on to their knight but well d3 is a very strong pawn move that will force black to lose his dark squared bishop or the knight before i move on you guys i just want to show you the score statistics in the leeches database so that i can give you much confidence in these traps so you can see that these traps do work most white players do well these are things you can try out in your live games and let me hear back from you how they are going to work these traps should be enough to inspire you to start playing the Roy Lopez. Well, thank you for.